Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So one more for good measure, this time around we have a credible source saying that Elon was driving this Cybertruck at Giga Texas as of yesterday. No way to confirm it, but it does seem like we're getting between two and four new Cybertrucks built each day that are then being distributed throughout the country. Over the past few months, we've been watching Tesla move more toward having certified installers for its solar and energy products, rather than doing some of those installations themselves. Now, Electrek is reporting from sources familiar with the matter that Tesla has been laying off staff at energy offices across the US. Tesla has laid off several solar roof installation crews and energy office employees in North Carolina and Maryland. Sources say more layoffs are expected across the energy division. Electrek is saying Tesla will become more of a solar product supplier for other installers with the main goal of deploying its new solar inverter, which works with both solar panels or its solar roof as well as power walls. Over the past few years, given supply chain problems for solar panels, Paired with the complexity of installing Tesla's solar roof on different pre-existing homes where everyone is completely different, one could actually make the argument that this is the strategy Tesla should have been deploying all along. It's actually a case where Tesla has tried to vertically integrate like they've done so well with so many other things, but in this case, it's probably going to be more efficient and will end with Tesla having higher margins going this route, essentially delegating these installations to certified installers. This way, rather than Tesla having to deal with the installers in-house dealing with all of that complexity, they can just focus on making the products and the software that goes with it and then selling that to other companies to then actually install the products. And if you've been around the channel, you may remember that Tesla has already been doing this now for a a few years. And Elon put this request out there saying, if you are a roofing company, please consider adding solar roof to your offerings. And then it becomes those third party installers that can advertise this Tesla ecosystem. In fairness, I have said this before, but this move in theory and given some time should expedite the rollout of Tesla energy and Tesla electric systems. I think one of the best examples of this strategy already being deployed by Tesla is Weddell and Sons, who was actually one of the first certified Tesla solar roof installers, and they advertised Tesla's product on their main page. So rather than Tesla having to deal with all of these very involved steps that is the process of buying solar, now these third parties can do it for Tesla, and Tesla can just do what they do best, focus on the products, continually innovating, and the software that goes with them. Which again, I think in the long term could actually boost Tesla's energy margins. It really is almost impossible to say, but if I had to guess in the long term, maybe this would result in a slight increase of Tesla energy products, but from a margin standpoint, this actually could be beneficial to Tesla once all of the dust settles and they move forward with this new strategy. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? Car News China is telling us that this batch of Model 3 Project Highlands was out doing some high temperature testing in China. I'd also point out from this view, you can see a hand on a steering wheel, not a yoke as some may have been anticipating. And I have to say, Tesla has done a great job limiting the Osborne effect with this vehicle. Despite how loud all of these leaks seem in the community, 
Outside of our little echo chamber, people still have no idea what Project Highland even is. Wuwa chimed in saying Model 3 Highland should be delivered at the end of September, but there's a lot more. First, we have to go back in time to July of this year when it was reported Tesla started laying off some battery workers at Giga Shanghai and some were given the option to transfer to another workshop. And lastly, some automation equipment that could help replace human labor on the battery production line is in the design and construction phase. Back to today, we have 36KR reporting that the Project Highland again delivered end of September. In order to ensure the supply of that production capacity, the first phase of the battery production line of the Shanghai factory, which had been shut down, is also planned to resume production in September. At present, some production line personnel are returning to work, but some are not. It's not clear how much will eventually recover. And they touched on what we heard in July, Tesla had suspended the old phase one factory with production lines. From everything I can gather at Giga Shanghai, there are three different phases for battery production. Phase one, phase two, and then phase 2.2. Phase one is the oldest, it has the least amount of automation and it was the one that was mostly shut down that we heard in July. Phase two is supposed to be the main battery production for Tesla with much more automation. And then phase 2.2 is supposed to be the new est section at Giga Shanghai. So clearly Tesla is expecting much higher levels of demand for the Model 3 if they're going to turn back on that phase one, which is what this report is telling us. They're also saying Project Highland has a new style front bump Bumper, a smoother body design, and it's equipped with streaming media rear view mirrors, multi-spoke aluminum alloy wheels, and the interior will also turn to a more concise configuration, such as integrating the turn signal operation on the steering wheel and switching gears through the central control screen. And yes, earlier this year, I know we saw prototypes with no stocks, but I know a lot of people were hoping that was not going to stay for the final variant. They're also still talking about hardware 3.5, which really technically is not an actual thing. It could be something internally at Tesla where it doesn't have radar. And I know some sales reps have mentioned hardware 3.5 in the past, again, maybe an internal thing, but, but from an actual hardware perspective, Tesla only has hardware 3 and hardware 4. They're also saying based on weekly production capacity, battery factory or phase one can produce three to 4,000 battery packs or about 12,000 per month. Factory two and 2.2 can each produce around 10,000 packs per week. Across all three phases, they can do around 100,000 battery packs per month. And because the demand is expected to be up, phase one is going to reopen again. An exec in the industry said the future of the car industry is cost competition. The top companies will keep a certain profit margin for themselves and then continue to use their price advantage to knock out competitors. Since some folks are new here, to give context, I spent a few years in the health and wellness industry and had my eyes open to a lot. A parasite knocked me off track the past three years, but that season may be coming to an end. I'm telling you this because the fitness world is full of scams and landmines, so finding the gems is mission critical. Shout out to one of those gems, AG1, the sponsor of this video. Years later, after first trying it to support Lex Friedman, it's become a part of my life to ensure a baseline of daily nutrition. If you're struggling to get moving or you're in a season of lethargy, sometimes doing one good thing for yourself can get the momentum going. The statistics on AG1 are stellar with over 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics in every serving, and Andrew Huberman is on the board of advisors. It's independently tested, I think it tastes good as is, it's ready in seconds, and I have my family taking it as well. It's simple, I'm a different person when I'm getting good nutrition and moving than when I'm not. So if you want a way to get it moving, you can go to drinkag1.com slash electrified, linked below for five travel packs and a one year supply of vitamin D3 K2 for free. Enjoy. I think we need to be extra cautious with this one because the source is Business Insider who has been very anti-Tesla and anti-Elon. But according to internal documents that they somehow got their hands on, they're saying production targets at Giga Berlin have been revised down to about 4,350 cars per week after we saw them eclipse the 5,000 units per week a few months back. They said even the new lower rate has been difficult to achieve as internal sources say the production rate is currently below 4,000 cars per week. The reason cited, a shortage of workers within the factory with existing employees complaining about heavy workloads, 
shifts going unfilled, and an increase in sickness rates. It's certainly something to keep an eye on, and it doesn't really jive with Tesla seemingly plowing ahead for this full-on Giga Berlin expansion, going from 500,000 to a million units of capacity per year. Given that Tesla is pushing forward with those plans that are being reviewed by the public now, I would imagine Tesla is viewing this temporary slowdown as not a permanent situation. Luckily for Tesla, any drop in production from Berlin can be somewhat replaced by maybe cheaper production from Giga Shanghai as their main export hub, at least temporarily, because of course, long term, you always want to have that localized production. So this afternoon, Sandy Monroe posted a video talking about big news, how the SAE is standardizing Tesla's NACs. I just had to share because it was very funny. He showed us a magazine saying you heard it here first, but of course that news has been out for some time now. We got a new press release today from the American Customer Satisfaction Index. The automobile survey for this year is based on 8.9 thousand customers chosen at random and contacted between July last year and June this year. On the luxury front, Lexus remains first among luxury automakers, but they're not there alone. They slid down 1% to 83 out of 100, and now they share the top spot with Tesla, which went up 4%. They didn't really share much on their methodology though, so I don't wanna dive in too far, and there are some conflicting things, like they say drivers of both electric and hybrid vehicles are more satisfied than customers who own or lease gas-powered cars, while simultaneously saying EVs rank last for dependability and customer expectations for reliability, and they have the highest complaint rate. And I'm not sure I even agree with this bit as far as all of the data that I've seen. They said satisfaction with the auto industry as a whole has fully rebounded to pre-pandemic levels and consumer demand is strong despite rising interest rates. It's not really what the used market data is saying. And they said despite higher prices, value perceptions have improved as well. These factors bode well for automakers and their sales figures in the second half of this year. Most of the data I see is people complaining how high prices are for new vehicles relative to what we've seen over the past five to 10 years, not people feeling good about the great values they're getting buying new cars. Two semis were spotted on the road in Fresno this week, and according to the driver, Dean Little, he said the semis are currently on the road for testing and they originated out of Lathrop. He said he put about 400 miles on the truck, which used about 80% of the battery life. More importantly, and pretty much the rest of what we get with this article, he said, I actually love driving these trucks. He's been a driver now for over 20 years. Another year or so of testing these out on the roads before ramping production at the new and improved Giga Nevada should be a great thing for Tesla. We got the weekly China insurance data for Tesla, 13.9 thousand. Plugging that data in for week seven of quarter three, if you wanted to compare it to the same week in quarter two, that number was 10.2 thousand. And as you can see, looking at weeks one through seven of quarter two, we came in at about 67 thousand. Over the same seven weeks in quarter three, we're now at 72.2 thousand, pulling ahead of where we were in quarter two. So over the last three weeks, things have really turned around relative to quarter two for the better. I would add, if we were going to see an actual shutdown of a Model 3 production line for this Highland revamp, it would be toward the end of this month or into September. Not too sure on this source, Digitimes Asia saying Tesla might explore alternatives to lithium ion on batteries, kind of a misleading headline. They just said Tesla reporting considering building an EV battery material plant in Indonesia, which we know, to use their nickel-rich resources, and that Tesla is likely preparing to produce the critical materials for ternary batteries. This is just a fancy name for nickel manganese cobalt batteries for the cathode. That's where they derive their naming from. You may recall seeing Tesla batteries NMC811, nickel manganese cobalt, and the ratio 811, that would be a ternary battery using those three metals in the cathode. Another interesting source here reporting on Tesla energy deployments, this from SMM, a metals information provider. Among the top 10 battery energy storage companies for deployments in the first half of this year, six of them were Chinese companies, but leading the way, 
Tesla shipments in the first half of the year exceeded seven gigawatt hours, ranking first in the world. This number does include Powerwall deployments. I looked at Tesla's investor relations and adding Q1 and Q2 best deployments, it was about 7.2 gigawatt hours combined. According to SMM, the global best shipments in the first half of the year reached 72.4 gigawatt hours, of that, China's shipments were 47 gigawatt hours or about 65%. But from a company standpoint, again, including Powerwalls, not just Megapacks, Tesla took the number one spot, followed closely by BYD and SunGrow. And if you take one of Tesla's Megapack factories at 40 gigawatt hours of annual capacity, and you then extrapolate the global deployments from 72 in the first half to about 140 for the year, one Tesla Megapack factory once fully ramped would be about 30% of global deployments for this year. I'm very curious to hear what's going on with that Megapack factory in China. Replying to SMR, talking about Legacy Auto having their Kodak moment, Elon said, it's unfortunately trending that way for many automakers. Some companies understand, but their pace of change is nonetheless slow. Tesla is trying to be as helpful to other car makers as possible with a transition to autonomous electric vehicles. We open source our patents, provide access to superchargers, and have invited them to license our self-driving AI system. Lucid's Air EVs were everywhere, shuffling attendees around and offering test drives to various people. Now, though a new car was not on display, CEO Peter Rawlinson told me the recent price cuts of the Air sedan were working, and that Lucid's upcoming EV, the Gravity SUV, was gonna debut soon. This is gonna be a seven seat, three row, all electric SUV, truly state of the art. And I'm really excited at the prospect of unveiling this to the whole world this November. Don't forget to check out AG1 linked below if you're interested, thank you in advance. You can find me on X and Instagram linked below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.